For me, my emotional spending was love. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'm hearing this for the first time, oh, oh, wow. but I hope it's this love, not like another girl. Oh, oh, no, no. Welcome to the episode 2 of Net Balance and Chill with me, Sadie, where we talk about everything related to personal finance. Unfortunately, Sylvia is not here, my beloved co-host, because I have to kick her out due to the fact that we have to adhere to the SOP. Since all of you decided to join me, then I have no choice to kick her out, law. Right? Alpha, alpha. Yes. <laughs> but with me today, yes, Sylvia, we will miss you. But I have fabulous guests. I have John, I have Jen, and I have Shirley. But I'm going to let you all do the introduction because I know you all as the creator and I've known you all as the psychologist. So, John, take it away from me. Introduce yourself. I am John. I am known as Jen's Angmo boyfriend. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, so um, we we've been together for for seven over seven years, and we've built this brand of So I'm Jen and uh, a business doing digital content for brands and stuff like that. So I'm a little bit on the behind the, behind scene, behind the, the scenes, scenes yeah, running yeah. the business, setting up all the all the all the boring stuff and helping with the creative uh, work that we do. But I, I don't think you you are exactly very boring because you sing. And so yeah, I, I do music as well, but I, I, took, I, I took a step back from the music when right. I saw a business opportunity and, okay. a, and a, another creative field that I could go into with, with Jen. Um, so yeah, I do sing. I, I love to sing. Uh, I, I have music on Spotify. You can check that out as well. Spotify. Ah, okay. <laughs> so yeah, I'm a, I'm a musician turned into a business owner and a creator. You're going to be perfect for the show because we want to know about the business side. Mm. All right, next, I'm going to have Miss Jen. Hi, everyone. I'm Jen. I uh, create content. I, am, I write. I direct. And then uh, I edit. I sing. I do a lot of things because I'm very bored in my life. <laughs> so, I do a lot of creative work uh, and he, together with uh, my entire team, uh, we create branded content um, to like... Oh my god, I say... <laughs> it's okay. Can, right? Go wild. Oh, okay. Yeah. I do a lot of content on my social media. So, that's kind of what I do. What, what she meant is, um, you know, light-hearted, fun oh, content. Nice, you that's see? why we need you. <laughs> you see? Translator, yeah. translator. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, next we have Shalene, who is a psychologist. All right, great. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Charlene, and I am a LGBT affirmative clinical psychologist. And as a psychologist, I can diagnose and treat mental health disorders. So, yeah. Nice so, you're going to be perfect because today, we're going to talk about emotional spending. You are on TikTok, you all know emotional damage, right? But today, we're going to talk about emotional spending. All right. So, when we talk about emotional spending, we are all guilty. Don't lie. Don't act like you are innocent from it. Are you innocent from it? Are you innocent from... Doing it. I have been, I'm a very emotional person. When it comes to spending things, I tend to go wild until my credit card bill comes or when my <laughs> app shows me that, okay, this is your outstanding balance. Then I get extra emotional. Then I probably will have to call you, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I want to hear from you guys. Ha, ha, what is the most memorable emotional spending you have ever done? Let's start with you. So, uh, emotional spending is normally something bad has happened. Oh, oh okay. I, that's the way I normally see it when I when I think of emotional spending. You've you've gone through maybe something that makes you upset, right? And then you want to replace that by making yourself happy for maybe thirty minutes to two days. That's that's what I imagine when you buy something nice. It's 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 nice for a couple of days. That's about it. For me, my emotional spending was love. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm hearing this for the oh, first time, oh, wow. but I hope it's this love, not like another girl. Uh, oh, no, no, it's, it's about you, it's oh, about okay, you. Okay. Um, so the, yeah, the emotion was love and the item was a Rolex for her proposal. So, uh, oh, wow. yeah, that, that's a big purchase, it's an emotional purchase, but it's not because something bad, it was, it was I did it out of emotion. But I would still say a lot of uh, a lot of research and a lot of thought went into it. It wasn't impulsive. Yeah. Okay, that that, that that is such a nice answer. You know, I was yeah. hoping for like you know the other day, right? I was like you know I was affected by the shopping sales. You know, <laughs> and, uh, but that is so nice. That's very lovely. Yeah. What about you, Jen? So um. I am an emotional, impulsive, and compulsive spender. Ooh, very, different, so, eh? very different, Very different. Uh, we are okay. very different people okay. because uh, I like to buy things. 
I I'll tell you some stories later. But okay. maybe right now I'll just uh, first I want to understand what is emotional spending first. Mm -hmm. Is emotional spending like is, is is if it's positive, if it's love, is that considered good? Or if for me is when I'm sad, when I'm stressed, I spend that money. Is that emotional mm. spending? Is it bad? Mm. Well, yeah. we're gonna get her. Yeah, I want to hear your take. I had a different interpretation. That's why yeah. emotions yeah. can. Yeah. For me, it's just like I don't have a particular emotion to it. You know, whether it's negative, positive. If I see Shopee, then I'll be like, okay. I'm gonna... <laughs> this show is not sponsored by Shopee, by the way. I just <laughs> use an example, right? Mm. But for you, have you personally spent something that you regard it as emotional spending? Oh, of course. All the time, actually. Oh. <laughs> uh, but I think the most memorable one I, one I had was mm -hmm. sometime around last year after the pandemic, I was going to move out from my parents' right. house to my own place. And at that time, I was feeling very insecure financially. So I was like, oh, I'm not going to money. How are to, you know, can I have enough money to save for this, to buy furniture and whatever not. Mm -hmm. And then our dear trusted Shopee came up. You know the Shopee, what, right? We, we, oh my god, we are not bashing Shopee, by the way. It's okay, not, it, 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 it it's just very us. enabling. It serves us. It serves yes. us at some point, right? Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So it came up, and of course, like the flash sale came up, <laughs> and it was like, oh, buy a, a year's worth of toothpaste and voucher. You know, yeah, and and <laughs> so that's what I did. I bought a year's worth of toothpaste and a year's worth of this washing liquid. Where do you put it? <laughs> <laughs> exactly my problem. I had a whole box of it in my house and it's still in the box until now. Oh it expired already in the bus chat, you Besides, know. Right? I was thinking, oh my god, what a dumb idea. <laughs> right. right. But I bought it because I was so scared that, oh, right. what if I cannot afford after this? Mm -hmm. I, I save as much as I can because I had to spend for furniture, spend for this, spend for that. So in that moment, and some more like, you know, got countdown, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So at 12 o'clock, I'm just like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, should I, should I not? Should I call my mom, do you want toothpaste? Ah? <laughs> No, you don't. You want this or not? And then at the end of the day, yeah, I just bought it. It's yeah. still there. At the end of the day, you will become the warehouse sale, you know. Yes. Because, you know yeah, you need to open a store and yourself. So if anybody here wants toothpaste and dishwashing liquid, please, I will give it to the you. Malaysia, for Malaysia free. Costco. But yeah. <laughs> so, so, so we have had people who share experience of, like, for your case, it's mostly positive. Yeah. You yeah. spend because, you know, you do your research and all. For your case, it's compulsive. Yeah. And then for her, it's, I think it's more of safety. Like, you just want to buy so that you, you know, in case you need it, right? But some people will say, oh, emotional spending is equivalent to self-care. So what do you have to say about that? I understand why people think it's self-care because the treat yourself kind of yeah. vibe, right? Uh, but a lot of times, it's very different from each other. Self-care and emotional spending do not fall within the same category. Oh, they don't? It does not. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, explain please. I'm yeah, listening. Yeah. I'm here so, like going so, so what is self-care? And what is Okay, so what is self-care then? Yeah. Okay. So self-care like the word suggests, right? Is taking care of yourself. Right. Okay? So in in various ways, it's not just buying things for yourself. Okay. It's emotionally, physically, you know, mentally and then financially. So with emotional spending, you run the risk of overspending. Right? And when you overspend, you're no longer taking care of yourself. In fact, you're harming yourself True. because when you don't have enough money, you're going to have a lot of anxiety. Yes. Right? A lot of depression sometimes. You know, if it gets really bad, it can lead to that. So you cannot possibly fall under self care when it has the risk of hurting yourself. That is so important. Oh. That is so important. So actually, if you're spending and it's for, you're spending for self care, right now, I think. When you see on social media, on Instagram and all, it's all about a self-love, self-love. Yeah. Or buy this coaster, it's about self-love. Yeah. Buy this uh, hair clip, it's self-love. But I think, like you said, it's actually hurting ourselves back financially. When the credit card bill comes. Yeah. Especially yeah. I don't think you need to spend money to self-care as well. There's things in your house you can use for, for self-care. Maybe self-care is taking time for yourself. But the consumerism has right. created... And, and you know. I, I expected this answer from you, especially as a musician and artist, right? Yeah. Most of the artists I've met, they have this kind of perception that self-care is not always about spending, you know? I love making music. When I make music, it's a self-care mm. for myself, you yeah. know? And meanwhile, for us, you know, we tend to have a little bit of a you know different definition. But I want to digress a little bit, yeah? As a psychologist, right? Because sometimes people say, oh, money can't buy you happiness. But you touch on the fact that if you spend, you get, you know, anxiety, right? Mm -hmm. But what do you have to say about people who say money cannot buy happiness? Because sometimes it does. It does. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. No, 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 no. So there, there was a research that said that if you, uh, money does buy you happiness to a certain extent. 
Right. So let's say if you have no money to buy that Starbucks whenever you feel like drinking, then you you are restricted already. So you cannot be happy because um you know consumerism has made the world such a way where to feel happy you need to buy this 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 yeah. this. They sell you the idea of luxury of premium. So to feel good about yourself, I need to buy this set uh, outfit or you know what's mm. on trend right now. So so that's the thing. I don't think um spending will make you happy. It will give you that relief, a temporary yeah. relief. But ultimately, if you feel like <coughs> right now, you buy that <coughs> doesn't mean that you feel better tomorrow. Do you know what I mean? You feel better you for the first three yeah. minutes. You feel like yeah. the first three minutes, like most yeah. guys, you know, just three yeah. minutes, then <laughs> happy. Then, then after that, the next day, you still feel like. <coughs> so for me, I feel why I I graduated from emotional spending is because I. Learned or have the maturity to know that okay, I'm doing this because it's emotional, mm -hmm. and then from there I grew out of it. I think you yeah. Uh, so Jen went through a phase where she she bought expensive items and not expensive items, and realized, especially from the expensive items, that having it for less than a week. That's why I said like the 30 minutes to two days period where the dopamine is high and you're feeling good about oh, this. So that and then came it, from experience. Oh yeah, I yeah. See. I've okay. seen it. All right. All she, right. She, she she wanted to to buy let's say like this bag. Mm -hmm. Then she got it. And after one week, she's like, okay, eh, yeah, yeah, I got on, it. On to the next thing. Yeah. Like yeah. I've worked for this. I earned this money. I spent it. It was nice. What's next? <laughs> oh my god, we so, need we need Jen. He's he's he's, he's airing all my dirty laundry. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, we need we need Jen. The audience would like to see Jen <laughs> spilling more tea. Okay, I want to know what's the most interesting story on your email because you wanted to tell me mm. just now. What is the most interesting story? Okay, so okay, emotional spending to me is about um you I I I, I see it, I like it, I buy it. Correct, okay. girl okay. boss. So I've been doing that. Um, this was before the pandemic and mm. I, I spent so much. I'll tell you this this one experience when I realized emotional spending has gone overboard. Okay? okay. So I was about to buy John uh, like a phone clamp for his phone in the car. Mm. So I give my debit card, I give lah. Mm. For the first time in my life, insufficient funds. Oh, debit card. Oh, this is, we all collectively mm. do the you know? debit card, yeah. yeah. Debit card, yeah. So I was like, hey, cannot lah. No, no, no. I was I convinced myself that there's problem with the machine. <laughs> so I went to the ATM. I went in there. Tit, 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 tit. I need 120 ringgit. Oi. Now I scratched my head there. And you know when you're seeing from afar the scene, right? Of someone in front of an ATM machine scratching head. There's only one, yeah. one or two <laughs> possibilities. One is you don't know how to use ATM. Number two is you have... Wow. You have you are left 35 ringgit and 50 cent in your account. Okay. This is where my salary go in, you know. Mm -hmm. I spend more than my salary. Okay. That was the moment I realized, wow, this emotional spending <laughs> is taking me outside. I, I feel sad about yeah. myself. So that's when I realized that I need to rework yep. and check myself. So I was researching about emotional spending, right? Okay. And I realized that uh, it's it's a temporary relief. And number two is it's all about like um, when you're sad, when you're happy, you also do it. But boredom is an emotion as well. So when I'm bored, I go on Shopee on Lazada to shop. Mm. So I've been doing that almost every single morning when I'm having my coffee. Please stop looking at me when I say that. <laughs> 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 but I've been doing that. And I think boredom leads to emotional spending as well. When you have nothing to do, yeah. especially when the app is directly in front of you, yeah. I put it on my front page. So <laughs> That's because you put it on the front page. I put it right right at the back already. Eventually, I will have to learn, you know, like eventually I have to learn about all this because I've been doing emotional spending myself when I first got my credit card. That's why I always advise people, <laughs> if you are, if, a lot of kids ask me, is it important to get credit card? Yes and no. But to me, it's like when you first got it, you have to remember that Number one, you're kind of on top of the world because you can spend anything you want now. But it comes with a price. And I always tell people, when you get your first credit card, don't spend beyond your means and do not pay minimum. Because the last time I did was I keep paying minimum. And then it will never end until I call the bank. I say, you need to tell me how much I need to pay. <laughs> I cannot do this anymore. Hey, right now, also got the pay later. Bad. It's <laughs> bad. I don't like it. Okay, I want to get to you. And I want to know your interesting emotional spending story and is it really that bad? Okay. Um, well, for me, I would say it's interesting but it's interesting that it's so normalised is that mm. whenever I go drinking with my friends, mm. okay, and it's a specific group of friends, for some reason, whenever I go with them, I want to spend. Mm. Because they made me so happy. 
Mm-hmm. When I go there, we start one drinks, one round, and we're like, okay, the ritual will come. Then the next one comes in, and the next one, and you're like, okay, you know what? I'm going to buy a bottle now. Oh. Right? And it happens very, very often. And when we get, all of us get hyped, we hype each other up. Mm-hmm, then we keep mm-hmm, buying more. Mm-hmm. And the next thing you know, it's three o'clock in the morning, and you're like, the bill is like a thousand plus. <laughs> huh? So that happens very often. And because I know it happens often, mm-hmm. I had to force myself and my friends also to kind of come up with a plan that we cannot spend that much anymore. Mm-hmm. Right? So we had to pre plan our spending. And because we know that we will emotionally spend, all of us have a cap in our cards. We only bring a certain card. Okay. So before we go out, we make sure strategy. we leave certain cards in the car or we leave it at home. Then we go out and we bring certain cards with earning a certain amount of money. Or we bring cash. Just cash, yeah. And only cash. So we pay with cash on the spot. Mm. And that has, it has helped. It has helped. It has helped. Because we are more conscious even before entering the space. Mm. We know I have to spend, I have to uh, I've been, be careful about my money. Mm. So it has helped because I don't trust myself when I'm already there. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm in and my, when you're intoxicated, yeah. 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 it's even worse. Yeah, I'm saying, yeah, I'm saying, you just want to yes. explore the hype friends are like, liar, yeah, let's, let's go, let's go. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Oh. And I don't trust myself because I also know that a lot of these experiences, and not just my experiences, but um, you know, things of luxury and premium bags and whatever not, they're not just our fault. That's not we had the conversation about, you know, uh, poor people can't afford phones, don't mm-hmm. buy them. Mm-hmm. But it's not also their fault. It's the mm-hmm. people that market it. Influencers keep showing, oh, you buy this means, then you're on trend, and they yeah. keep wearing it, they oh, keep using it. Yeah. After a while, you also like, I want to be like that. Yeah. So it's sold to them, your condition, and this is how capitalism works, right? right? So it sells you the idea of, you know, luxury and premium, and it is emotional. So, you know, to define what emotional spending actually is, right? Emotional spending is when you spend at a heightened state, when oh. you're an a heightened state doesn't mean it has to be negative, mm. right? It can be love, heightened. it can be boredom, it can be happiness, it can be anything that is a heightened emotional state. Right. And that is different from normal spending. Mm. So not every spending is emotional, right? Shopping can actually be a good thing. It's only bad when it becomes emotional, meaning you don't have control over it. Mm. So like I mentioned just now, right? It can be helpful if you are uh, putting it in a controlled environment and you are doing it consciously. Like what I said, lah, only have certain amount in your, in your card, having mm. cash. Then it's still safe. Mm. But it becomes unhealthy when it's no longer in your control. And then you are dependent on it to feel better. Mm. So if I don't know, if I don't shop, bah, if I don't drink at Starbucks every weekend, nah, then I'm going to be sad all the time. And I don't know what to do to make myself feel better. So that's the difference between shopping, normal shopping and emotional spending. So you're saying that emotional shopping actually is not a bad thing. <laughs> She's uh, taking all the positive yeah, sides. Yeah, I'm like right? listening. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's impossible to not emotionally spend with the context that's around us. Yes. Mm. So you're saying it's impossible to, to omit emotional spending completely? Completely, yes. It's hard. And to put the blame on ourselves makes us shame ourselves yeah. and say, what's wrong with me? Why am I like this? Mm. Because they keep selling that to you, right? Oh. Go and shop it every other time. Ding, ding, or Lazada, whatever lah. There's always a notification. It's hard for you to stay away from that. You will be online. You will see people promoting stuff. So it's what not always our fault. What about like rewarding yourself? For... They had a self-love flow. That's why they were thinking. Yeah, I guess that's self-love as well. Um, yeah. But like some people maybe reward themselves for the smallest thing. Like I achieved this, yes. I'm going to buy this. I achieved this, I'm going to buy this. I achieved this, I'm going to buy this. Because they've been then, conditioned to recognize that treating yourself means self-care. And whenever I feel low or like stressed or I achieve something, everything is buying. Mm. Because you've been conditioned. Mm. Buy, 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 buy. Buy equals happiness. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think sometimes we are a little bit guilty in that lah. You know, you are creator, influencer. We have, oh, three of us, we have done something like that. We have been promoting stuff on social media. But you mentioned something about, um, you know, when, when, when it comes to emotional spending, it's more on you doing it, spending it at a heightened state of mind, right? Yes, we cannot get out of it, of course. But how do you curb it? Like, how do you manage it? Do you have any tips for... Myself, Jen. I like earlier she said, right, that mm. like you have that amount of money with friends. You said it. But it starts with awareness, right? That's the thing. But how do you yeah. get that? Yeah. But before we even get there, I think we need to understand what happens to our bodies first. This is a very uh, physical uh, thing, is actually. Okay. Right? And then we can understand w- uh, what to do about it. Okay. So, when we want to shop, right, um, especially in a heightened state, right. 
for example, if you use more negative emotions like, you know, sadness, tired, stressed, mm. all those kind of emotions, right? Your body recognizes that it's not um, in, in a baseline, meaning you have in, uh, decreased levels of dopamine and serotonin and oxytocin. Those are called happy hormones, mm. right? So you've got decreased levels and your body understands that and it's like, okay, all right, guys, we have to, you know, increase it, right? Because it's not, uh, you know, in a normal state. Mm. So immediately we try to find something to make us feel better again. Right. It's a very simple process of just reaching equilibrium again. Mm. So the thing is, because shopping is so accessible, it's so convenient. Instant. Especially in Malaysia. Exactly. Yes. You just touch your phone and you can already buy something. So your brain just is just doing um, the best thing it can find to help you regulate itself. Right? So it doesn't know whether it's bad or good. And that's what coping mechanisms are. Mm. Whether it's healthy or unhealthy is dependent on what you decide is healthy or unhealthy. But your body is just doing its job. To actually curb it, um, you have to be very aware of what's happening. So I recognize, okay, first thing is recognizing what you're feeling. Mm. And a lot of people don't, uh, you'll be surprised, a lot of people don't actually understand how certain feelings feel like in their body. Wait, 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 wait. say that again. Yeah, how I, certain feelings feel, feel like. like. In yeah. your so body. you feel it, but you don't uh, you don't process it. You don't understand yeah. why. So I'm what sad, like. but I'm sad here. I think I'm sad, but I'm not sad in my body. Okay, so for example, me, right? right? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. When yeah. I'm feeling sad, right. I recognize that I tend to sigh a lot. So I'm just like, <sighs> oh, physiological yes. um, expression. So Correct. you sigh. I sigh, and then I feel okay. heavy. My body feels heavy. I feel like I cannot move. My chest is heavy, oh. right? And that. Signs tell me, okay, maybe I'm kind of sad. Maybe mm. I'm kind of feeling low. Mm. So recognizing what it is and then labeling that feeling. Am I sad or am I tired? Okay, if I'm tired, why am I tired? Oh, yeah, lah, because today I had a long day. This whole week I had a, you know, a due date to submit, you know, stuff like that. Mm. When you start labeling it, then you can, you know, out of curiosity, it's very important to find out where is it coming from. So, when I say out of curiosity, because sometimes we tend to do this, we tend to go like, oh yeah, why am I so sad? Ah? Why am I always like this? Mm -hmm. And that is very, um, you're being very critical of yourself. And that will give you even more negative emotions. Yeah, I get frustrated when I am frustrated at myself. Exactly. Like, you know how I'm spiraling. Yes. Yeah. Like, I'm angry over something, but like, I'm, and then I'm angry at myself for being angry. You see how twisted? Exactly. Oh my God. So, the tone of voice, just going like, hmm, why yeah? Why am I sad? Ah? Why am I frustrated? Then when you answer it, it already reduces the feeling that you're feeling. So the chances of you emotionally spending already reduces. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Awareness. So let's say you're feeling sad. Sometimes even if you answer that question as to why, the feeling is still there. Yeah. So yeah. you must learn how to be uh, comfortable with discomfort. Okay lah, I'm sad. So you know what? I'm so conscious about it. I'm not going to go and get some quick fix. I'm going to sit here on my candle, I mean, turn on my candle, lie down on my bed. Oh, but bed. you need to buy the candle first. <laughs> <laughs> no you like my you like candle, so can. <laughs> no candles at home, huh? no, candles. no, but that's a okay purchase, right? right. It's not that's a impulsive. Yeah. yeah. You're preparing for yourself. So you find another healthier coping mechanism mm -hmm. to soothe yourself instead of things that are unhealthy and can harm you. So what I do, right? Um, so I follow this person on Instagram. Mm. Uh, he does pre, uh, he sells pre-love uh, luxury goods. Okay. I have I haven't unfollowed yet because I haven't <laughs> allowed myself to unfollow yet. But sometimes I see the IG stories, I see this bag, I see the bag. Ooh. And then I'd be like, eh, eh, wait, quite nice, eh, quite affordable, eh, I want it. Uh. Then you know what I do? I do this. Uh. Oh, oh, oh. I give myself a bit of like this negative feeling and associate that, eh, I want this, I want this with something like a little bit uncomfortable. I think it, but it's from experience as well. Yeah, but, you... but that negative reinforcement helps me. Yeah. So, the problem with like um, thinking about it, it takes too long, it's so uncomfortable and I just don't want to think it. And because of that, it fuels me to continue looking at the item that mm -hmm. I want to get. Mm -hmm. So like something fast like this or like I, I just shake my body or something like that, it just helps me physiologically mm -hmm. just distract myself. It's the same thing, right? It's a coping mechanism that you're using and it's readjusting your physiology but in a healthier way. Of course, it's painful. Lah. So, yeah. maybe another okay, method, I need another, oh, yeah, yeah, another yeah, method yeah, yeah. that you can possibly use is at that moment, you start breathing. You just take a big breath and go like, what am I feeling? <sighs> okay, mm. alright. Look, I have this urge to go and shop. So, immediately I put my phone away then I breathe for a while. Just by doing that, your body already starts to regulate itself. Okay naturally and breathing and there's something called grounding techniques and you can google all of this is everywhere 
uh, what can you do to ground yourself so that your body can f- you can feel back in your body and it can regulate itself naturally. Right, so these small things, and I mean, I'm, you can Google for multiple techniques, lah. But all of these things actually help physiologically to go back to a not so heightened state. Mm. Then naturally, you will be like, okay, the cravings a bit lesser. Then your conscious mind can come in and go like, okay, bad move. Let's not do this. Let's find something else to do. Another thing is to date someone who nags. <laughs> that really helps, you know. I think I think Because... we didn't we didn't cover that actually. That I'm, I'm a very like. I, I say like pedantic spender. I will, I will go into detail of everything. Even this mug, I will look at the dimensions. Is it going to fit my cupboard properly? Like, so is boring. It, is it the yes? <laughs> no, you you're so nice to me. Like, that's so annoying. Yeah. But, but he he helps with yeah. the spending. It you know? slows it. Annoying. <laughs> Because sometimes I just want to like you know. Spending makes me feel happy, but yeah, it helps. But... He helps because the the negative reinforcement. I think I I react very well to negative reinforcement. Uh, right. So like this or like this, yeah, 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 it stops me. So that's why I kind of like graduated from emotional spending. I think fun, our funny story is so when we go to IKEA, we kind of know what we want to get. Otherwise, you're just sort of like window shopping. But when we even when we know what we want to get, mm-hmm. Jen will walk in and go, "Oh, that's nice. Let's get it." We didn't come here to buy that. Oh, but, but it's, it's, it's nice. It's nice. Let's get. Yeah, it's there. But, you know. But, but once you buy it, then if it's not nice, like after three months, you want to throw away. Then what? Yeah. So so. We what have I'm this argument every here. single time we go to IKEA. <laughs> it's good to have someone to keep you accountable. So I think that's another way. Like like you and your friends earlier, you mentioned like you drink together. You know your problem, and then you use cash instead. I think mm. acknowledging it. Being aware, and then one more thing is having your the support system. Yeah, that's a important. grounding technique that she's using. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Correct. Yes, I'm dating a grounder. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, that's very good. That's a very good point. So we breathe, or we 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 date somebody that will nag us, or we give ourselves give ourselves a little bit of a flick. Okay, but I want to address look directly at you because you mentioned that you're following somebody that you until now you cannot bring yourself yeah. to unfollow. Yeah. Right, but you also an influencer yourself, okay. right? So, do you think, right, we should start asking or demand influencers, right, to stop telling us that buying means happiness? Do you think we should stop? But the truth is, buying is happiness. <laughs> I mean, that, that's the truth, right? Temporary. Temporary. <laughs> Temporary. Without hesitation, there is no What? hesitation. I gotta be oh, real. The okay. truth is, okay. I buy, I buy something. It, it right. is scientifically proven that you have uh, dopamine lah. Endorphin la, all these fin fin fin, right? You will feel good. True, true. And I think people are getting more and more sophisticated. Like having mm-hmm. conversation like that, people yeah. are getting more sophisticated. They're aware um, that you know, just because influencers say it's good, doesn't mean that I need to buy. I, no way, okay. wrong way. I do have an opinion on this. Yes. I feel like um, as influencers, you have a responsibility to the public. So even if you can, you know, you show and you buy whatever that you can do that, mm-hmm. but maybe. At some point, you know, have an honest conversation and go like, okay, these are brands and products, yes, but there are also other things to focus on in life that makes me different or makes you feel more special. And I think being really honest helps because then they see you as a real person. Yeah. You know, and also if you find yourself constantly showing brands after brands after brands, you know that you're only going for a certain demographic, and, and the you're rest, a billboard. Exactly, and you know you are. You have to check yourself. Yeah. Right, and be honest again because then you're selling yourself as a you're a brand lah. You yourself are a brand, then, so it, you must have some level of, you know, public responsibility to explain and show that, hey, you know what? I also thrift. I also buy cheaper stuff that you can also buy to look really good. So yeah. these small, small things can really help to get people to recognize that you are a human being also, and you also <laughs> care about other people who cannot afford it. But do you think it should be a law? Like oh, it can't be, uh, you like know. Like a social media I policy. I think it will sabotage us, like yeah. our, our career will be affected. That's why I still eat at Mama. Ah, by the way, <laughs> me eating at some luxury places. I still eat at Mama places just to. Yeah, but show that to the public, mm. right? Should be honest. Is that how Instagram has that a thing that you have to put? It's an ad now. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yep. The hashtag branded promotion. It yeah, helps because when I go and I'm like, oh, ad, okay, fine. I don't have to like, I uh, can check myself and not think that oh, if I have that only, I can feel good about myself. Mm. That helps you keep in check, and I think this. Being honest, if you eat a mama, I eat a mama. If I went thrifting, I went thrifting, so people can know that. Okay, it's not that. But I bad think sometimes lah. people don't. Some some influencers don't do that because it makes them look like they are not 
high class. There's, I mean, there's, yeah, there's, there's so many categories, right? Yeah. There's, there's some influencers that want to look like they have the great life, or some actually have an amazing life, or, or they come mm. from money, or they become very rich from something, and and they like to just show it off. Um, I think for like for us personally, we we don't really show like all the branded items and yep. stuff. So it was. So it depends on the branding for certain influencers. Yeah, it's like everyone has an, an angle. I feel like I mean, you see some people. It's every day they're posting about their Rolex, about their I know. Rolls Royce, about. And then this. when we invite them to the. To, to net balance and chill, then they started telling that they're actually broke, yeah. they're, you know, on the brink of bankruptcy, and you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Should so, have listened to Shalene, right? It's just, a, it's, it's just like a facade, right? Yeah, it's, it's a facade. A, it's it's just always just a, a facade, facade. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, this is for you. How does spending as a coping mechanism affect somebody in the long run? Mm. Okay, hmm. so this is really important to understand that your financial health is as important as your mental health and physical health. Okay. And why is that? Because your financial health is about money, right? Yeah. And your money is your form of security, right? A sense of security. And we're not talking about the buying things for happiness. We're talking about just having a house, having food, mm. having... It is a form of security. Mm. And if you overspend too much to a point that you no longer have that sense of security, then you're opening the doors to so many other mental health issues. But at that point, it becomes too overwhelming because you no longer have control. You see this in people who maybe um, gamble, for example. Then oh. you have to give your house away. You know, you have to sell your stuff. Then it dives deep into a mental health issue already. And it's very hard to solve unless you've got money. It is not easy to get, right? Once you owe people money, for example. And the interest. Exactly. And, oh, oh God. So it, it, in the long run, it can lead up to that if you don't have a control over your emotional spending. Mm. It's, uh, especially like having debt, right? Having yes. like credit card debt. Or in I know in the US is it was very popular before, like getting a credit card to pay another credit card. Mm. <laughs> I don't think they allow it anymore. Especially yeah. I, yeah. here, it's not a thing. I, it's still a thing here. You can do it. It is. They will still call you and they will tell you, "Hey, do you have outstanding? Because we would like to offer you with an." I'm like, I do not have any outstanding. But the question is, you're getting all these calls. I've not gotten this call before. <laughs> I, so. <laughs> I like I said, I'm very open about how I used to owe credit cards mm. until I paid. I owe about nine thousand ringgit. At the time, right, you have to know it was my first job, mm. and nine thousand was a lot, yes. you know. And then when you pay minimum, right, it's like, how come I can never clear the credit card? And then the interest and all right, and the, I tell you all something. I don't know what I. Do, I don't want to name banks, right? Sometimes you call them and you say, I want to clear off my credit card. They charge you penalty for clearing earlier. I, yeah, there's a there's if you if you thing. if you clear a loan too early, there's also an extra fee on the interest. Yeah, so <laughs> you just you, want you to ha- stay broke. You have to find because they want to they want to earn the the compound interest. They want to earn that total. Uh, this is the emotional side of spending. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and I'm telling you, when there was a, about ten over ten years ago, I'm I have no shame to say if I didn't have a dad who I can call. I'm not I'm not menteri, yeah. I'm not somebody's. My dad is a, a he's a businessman and all. Of course, it comes with a lot of nagging mm. and a lot of lecturing. I've been there. He told me. So, because I called him, I was like in tears and I said that uh, I am actually in trouble right now. I need your help. I was like expecting for yelling, you know, typical Asian parents, right? Yelling and, and, and you know, lecturing. He just asked me, so what have you learned from this? I was like, I will never spend beyond my means. I will never swipe whenever I want. Shopping. Yeah. <laughs> but before it, before it came out, before the app exists, okay, before the app exists. Okay, okay, okay. So, so, yeah. But that's triggering a little bit, like, like shopping. <laughs> it, is, it, it, is. it made me want to check my phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know, if, if it's not my dad who gave me the lecture and he, of course, he helped me. But after that, immediately after that, I make a very conscious decision to always clear my ca- credit card after I use it. Like the next day when it shows up on my Maybank, I'm like, hey, Maybank. You know, sponsor, sponsor. Uh, you know, if, if Maybank, you know, it shows that, hey, your outstanding is how much? Clear. Because I do not want to sleep knowing that I have to pay interest or whatever. So that messes with me. It does. That's why I like the part you say financial health affects your mental health. It does. It does. I mean, it's, it's like, I mean, it's not your only worth, but a lot of people take it as their worth. Yeah. How much cash do I have? How much savings do I have? What's my financial security in the, for the future and all that? So I completely understand. I, I I went through a time when I did the same thing. I had to call my dad, ask him for money. I, I wasn't in debt, but I was very low on cash. Yep, yep. So 
I have kind of no other choice at this time yeah. but to ask. But that's and the thing about money, right? Mm-hmm. Is that you don't have choice. If you didn't have sources to help you, you're stuck. Yeah. Yep. And you can go for any therapy you want. Nothing's mm-hmm. going to help. Clients who come to me and say, oh, I have to pay for this, pay for that, pay for my education. There's nothing I can do to help. There's no technique or whatever yeah. that I can do. Then you can also say, I also have to pay the same thing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but the thing is, you're stuck. When you yeah. are struggling financially, there's no way out but to have money. So I got a question. Is emotional spending same as retail therapy? Oh. Because <laughs> retail therapy, because earlier you mentioned the word therapy and I just got the kind of thing at retail therapy, people, you know, you used to window shop, you used to walk around, see items, touch, 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 feel, feel, feel. Mm. Right now, everything's online, mm. right? But is it the same thing? It's similar, but with very little differences. So retail therapy doesn't necessarily have to be bad. See, if it's done within a controlled environment, control. it can be good. Control. I think that's like, the theme today, win- control. Window yes. shopping is not spending, right? You're just looking at things you like. Like, we go to Ikea sometimes, look, but we walk out with like that's one thing. That's a prequel thing. to yeah. the actual <laughs> it's story. Yeah, the yeah, it's a prequel. Yeah. But do you know, before you even buy the thing, your brain already starts releasing chemicals. Mm. It mm. releases its happy hormones. Even, even before purchasing it, you're walking, you're touching the stuff, you're looking at it, or you're putting it in your cart, you're mm. scrolling. All of that, your brain's already releasing it because mm. you know you're going to get happy and this whole process makes you happy the shopping is so nice it's like imagining what could be right yeah Almost if I like had that, this oh, that manifestation yeah. I've seen it imagine it in my house like yes. it would be so nice yes mm-hmm. So it's it's a good that's, thing. It, it, Emotional spending. Okay, it's, it's a good thing. It's, it's, it's control. It's, it's control. Yeah, but, it's control. That that's considered retail therapy, right? Yeah. Uh, but the emotional spending is the actual putting the money, putting the money and yeah, um, and it's it. like a at the moment you're about to spend. With no reason, no control. This, this entire episode is just for Jen to justify yeah. her <laughs> purchase. Let's be real here. It's for her yes. to feel good about us. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> but I want to cycle back to what you said just now, right? About you asking for that and uh, mm. that's help and all. I just want you all to know, sometimes you look at this and you're like, ah, of course, like, he got father to help you. A lot of people think that it's an easy way out, but there's a, sh- a little bit of shame. Oh, huge. That ca- yeah, because I'm, uh, 10 years ago, I was about 20 plus. So I thought to myself, I'm going to be a very independent financially. Indian. I don't need my dad's help anymore. But for me to call my dad and break down and ask for help, mm-hmm. that is not like a very easy thing. Is you know, That's the emotional damage part. That's the, I was, I was going to get to that, you know, I was very lucky that my dad didn't give me an abundance of money. He gave yep. me literally a couple of thousand and he said, don't come back. Oh, oh, oh so, okay. That, 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 that's a different twist. Okay. Obviously, if I really need to, I will call with more shame and, and have to do it right, again. And right, it's right. even more emotionally damaging. Mm-hmm. But I think I asked him once or twice for, for this little bit of cash to help me for the next month. And then it just so happened that things started to pick up for me and I never had to go back to him. But it, even till this day, I think I still owe him. I still owe him. And I paid him back like as much as I can already. But I feel I still owe him. You know? I mean, obviously I will owe him for life. My parents, uh, yeah, they course, gave me everything, course. right? So um, you're going to feel that. But that call to say, can, can I please just have a little yeah. bit of money? It's, it's like degrading almost. It's, I feel it. <laughs> totally, totally. So yeah. it, it is emotionally damaging. And we're lucky that, you know, maybe our, our parents, our, our dad could give us a bit of money, but some people don't have that. And then they have to go to a bank or then they have interest to pay. And so it's that's even actually something more I wanted damage. to say that like growing up, I didn't have much. Mm-hmm. And my parents, we were poor. So when I started earning my, my, my own money, mm-hmm. that's why it's so I buy things easily and I want things because I can afford it now. Because you and that kind of feed into my, my emotional spending. And then a lot of times there's a term for that. It's called financial trauma. Oh, oh, oh there's a financial... What is that? Yeah. So financial trauma is, you know, in your upbringing, for example, uh, maybe let's say you've had money and then you lost money. You had to lose a house, lose a car. Ooh. Traumatic. If you are just poor, right? That's also a traumatizing experience. No money to buy stuff. You have to calculate money. So when you have money, sometimes you compensate or that financial trauma gets projected in this way. Or I keep one thing. And another term is called scarcity mindset. It's where nothing's ever enough. Mm. I will never be safe enough. That's That's you, that's you. And that's me also sometimes. (laughs) Justification. (laughs) So nothing's ever enough, right? And like, no matter how many bags I buy, I always feel like I need more to feel either um, uh, rich enough mm. or I've made it or secure enough, right? And that is a, a bias that we have and marketing companies and organizations always use the scarcity mindset to sell us more things. Mm. You know, scarcity mindset. Ending so 
Faster, you yes. know, hurry up. Last day, last day. Correct. Ah, Correct. flash yeah. deals, you know. Two oh, vouchers time. left. Mm. <laughs> okay, this is since this episode is about Jen and her justification and all right. Okay, I want to go. I want to ask you this: yeah. Have you ever spent on something that you thought, okay, I'm gonna be very happy owning it, but then after a while, you're like, no, I don't feel good. Yeah, yeah. of course. All right, uh, a Chanel bag. The, she name dropped the brand. Yeah, so I have fast, to say so because fast, so. because I think by saying the <laughs> Chanel bag, everyone will understand. Okay. That, yeah. Because like, it seems like it's a, it's a goal for a lot of people. It's a goal for a lot of people, it's and it for was you. for me. But <laughs> I think I did okay. it. I did it as an experiment mm. because I feel like, wait, will this feel different if I held this bag to go for his his thirtieth birthday dinner, holding it right next to me? What will it feel like? Right. It's a really exp- expensive experiment, but I just wanted to know. So I saved up my money. I bought this bag. Can I even fit my phone? Huh? Mm, the small bag. It's a small like a uh, you know the vanity bag. It's very cute. Okay, so it's a vanity bag. After it's a vanity all. box. Yeah, it's really cute. It's really cute. It's very cute. Okay. Um, it, it's it's not like overly crazy expensive, but it was my first Chanel bag. But that moment, I remember, I I was wearing it. I went to the the the, the ladies in between dinner, and I was like, like, uh, looking at myself. Mm. Nothing also. Oh. Don't need this low. So that was the very moment I realized I don't need items to kind of make me feel a certain way. Yeah. Yeah. Because your personality is everything. Hashtag self-love. (laughs) Self-love. Because I think, you know, I I don't know about y'all, I've never walked up to somebody and ever look at him like, is that a Chanel bag? Mm. I've never done that. No, I care if somebody kind of, is that a, what brand, what brand? Like people ask me, where did you get cotton on? Yeah. Like, (laughs) I don't see the need to flaunt. That's a Chanel bag. Yeah, it what was about you? the first time ever and last time. I don't know. I mean... I, it's more logical. You know? I'm it's very, so logical. I'm very it's logical. so annoying. Yeah. We have to get the kind of answer Just, juice from him. There's something emotional. I bought I bought a... I bought something that... But I took a long time looking for the, for the one I wanted. Uh, I bought myself a classic mini. <laughs> So it's probably yeah probably the biggest purchase I've ever made, but I would say I still love it. <laughs> it wasn't impulsive. It wasn't that, that, impulsive. Not even it wasn't answering my question. It, my not, question I'm, is like, is there something you bought and then you regret it? Okay, nothing, fine. Nothing. You. Nothing. What about you? Uh, honestly, I can't recall anything. The toothpaste. <laughs> the toothpaste la. That one yes, but nothing special about it. It's, but you can you can probably sell that off. Like, you've it's got expired. Expired. It's expired. Expired. I don't know. But now it's gonna just be my Christmas gift to people. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the toothpaste, the toothpaste. Yeah, yeah. Really. but normally no. My my spending is usually um, food. Right, for example, after the end of the day, I wanna when I drive back home, last time I used to live from travel from Subang to Kajang. So so mm. many like drive throughs and I'm just like, mm, I should treat myself with some nice dessert. Mm. Those are when I spend emotionally. I think food, yeah, food is a big thing. Like emotional, yes. I, I wanna treat myself. Actually I'm I'm I, that's another like reason for me to emotionally spend. It's food. Same. And food Serious. delivery food food delivery now is very accessible. Yeah. Yeah. So uh yeah, I think food is a thing that I, I would... Because we were talking about emotion. things. We were talking about things yeah. the whole time. But I think food is a one food. big thing we Malaysians will be able to relate Because yeah. food is also, you know, physiological. You put it in your body, instant, you know, chemical yep. release. Mm. So it's very nice. And the kind of food, right, with the luxury restaurant that you sit down in, the, the environment that you're in, all of this gives us that dopamine, mm. right? So it, there's a reason why food is such a great way to feel better. It's true. But if it's From too expensive, then... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm. It is a good thing. It's just, if you're overspending, right? Mm. And if you're not in a controlled environment, again, that's when it becomes dangerous. La. True, mm. true. Yeah. Oh God, this is such an enlightening episode. Yeah, I feel like I'm in therapy already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I say I'll see my bill later. In boys later. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, emotional spending on therapies <laughs> and, and, and whatnot. Okay. So this last question, right? What does mental health literacy look like in terms of identifying feelings that lead to emotional spending? Ending. Mm. How do we navigate from here? So it's essentially what I mentioned earlier, right? Um, to improve mental health literacy, you need to start recognizing what it feels like in your body. That's the first thing. And people, and we're not trained to do that. We don't learn about mental health in schools. We yeah, don't learn sure. it we anywhere. Don't. Unless you go for therapy, that's when you learn about mental health literacy. So learning how it feels like in your body, labeling, you know, um, trying to solve it whenever you can. But sometimes certain issues, um, you can't solve it or you can't figure out why I feel this way for a long time. This I've been sad. Try to solve it. I use uh, coping mechanisms, healthy, unhealthy, all I've used, still feel the same way. 
in those moments when it's already in an extreme level, that's when you should consider seeing a mental professional. Because sometimes you need extra eyes to see what's happening. And unbiased. Yes. And non-judgmental. Non-judgmental, correct. But also you learn a few things, right? Like these coping techniques, you know, grounding techniques, breathing techniques, uh, understanding how it feels like, practicing. Even financial health, we would talk about that in therapy. So what other ways can you do? How can you budget in a way where you keep yourself safe? How can you have a... So what I have is called rubbish money. Oh. In my budget, I have a space called rubbish money where it's for my emotional spending. No. I know that it's so hard to control myself. So I'm like, okay lah. I have maybe 250 bucks so just buy whatever I want to buy at the time. Rubbish. I like that. I like that because you don't know what you want to buy but yep. you've got your budget. I yep. can just spend this. I go to to you one have time. Blown my this. Mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, okay. And a lot of bank apps these days, you can actually set aside the money for yeah. rubbish. Yeah. Rubbish yeah, money, like right? Tabung, yeah. tabung. Yeah. Ah, tabung. Ah, great, great, tabung. And these are things that we talk about, you know, practical solutions. Rubbish money, uh, setting caps on things, budgeting in a way where you still have savings. So even if you one month overspend a bit, it's okay, I've already got savings for a few mm. months. And it's, it's just, I mean, it's normally categorized as disposable income, right? Mm. So mm. that's what um, retail is always looking for, people who have excess disposable yes. income. So I, I like the idea of setting your disposable income because some people don't realize that they're maybe overspending that mm. disposable part. Mm. Normally, they dispose- go to the ATM. <laughs> yeah. And, and then you see, oh, 35, 35. ringgit, 50 cent. <laughs> <laughs> but did you ever here? trace back what happened or not? Like, yeah, yeah, trace back. It was just like a Something a to do routing. with the Chanel bag. <laughs> it's a routing problem. There was it's, it's multiple <laughs> accounts and then she was using one account. There was, there's, oh, there's, there's, I still had savings. There's I still had savings. Also, oh, you're not broke, broke. I'm nah. not broke, broke. Okay, okay, okay. I was hoping for the T, you know, like, oh, no, so no, no. so. I'm Jem was broke. But definitely, plus. definitely overspending. That, that was yeah. a that was a lesson of, uh, of or not keeping track and like reimbursing certain parts. No, I see, I like it, I buy it. So that, that yeah. was that was me for a while. So yeah. improving your mental, uh, your financial literacy helps in your mental health literacy. Mm. So you need to understand what does, you know, money coming in, money going in, how to budget, all those things helps in improving your mental health literacy. Yeah, last time when you, you, when you, when the credit card bill comes mm. and you pay me, Minimum and it never ends, right? You will never sleep in peace. Correct. You have to think about, oh, this month, and then it's not helping when you have a friend. Like, I remember last time I called a friend, shade alert, you know, I called a friend, I said, can you please lend me 200 ringgit? Because my my salary is supposed to come in the two days later. Mm. I need 200 ringgit. That was my first time asking for help, you know, mm. to which my friend said to me, yeah, I can, ah, but don't make this a habit, ah. In that moment, first time I'm asking. First time I'm asking. Oh. I was like, okay. In that moment, I have learned that number one, people will look down on you. People sometimes talk down on people who need financial help. Mm. And two, I will never get to stoop to that level again where I have to ask for help just for people to talk down on me like that. Mm. So I'm very conscious. After that, I'm like, you know what? I actually spent two years without credit card. I cut the card until I go overseas. Then people ask me for like... When you go to a hotel, right? <laughs> yeah. And then where's your credit card? <laughs> That's actually why I got a credit card And then as well. debit card is not helpful. They yeah. have limit. Yeah. 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 yeah, they don't accept it. Yeah. They take, like, they take a <gasps> cash deposit. And I'm like, I, okay, I have to withdraw money and give you cash. And yeah, then the hotel yeah. say, yes. Because your debit card, we can't do anything. I'm like, oh my God. So now, very conscious. All right. Mm. Before we go, I just want you guys to share your... Final words to the audience. What have you learned today? And where can they find you? Do a plug, plug, plug. Oh, uh, I learned that emotional spending is not bad. <laughs> ah, yeah. okay. I, I learned that it, it, you need to be moderate. Uh, you need to... It be in control. S- be in control. Thing. Know what you're spending. Mm. Uh, you can emotionally spend. It brings you a bit of happiness. But just know that it's temporary. It's just... It's like putting a bandage on a cut. It will help for a bit. But just know that what you spend needs to be within the means that you have. Wow. Yes. Wow. I learned so much today. Remember that, yeah? Huh? yeah. <laughs> See, already. Okay, yeah, but- so that's what I learned. And um, for me, is I feel like this whole session really makes me feel very comfortable talking about money. I've never really opened up talking about money before and it should be a very it comfortable should, conversation. Yeah, that's why we have a show, you mm. know, for this. Yeah. yeah, just to change people's perception. Where can they find you? Ah, you can find me on at Soimjen, S-O-I-M-J-E-N-N. I am at John Liddell Music. 
I won't spell it out for you. You can see it right here, probably. <laughs> <laughs> that is so smart. That is so smart. Okay. Or lazy. Okay. Yeah. What about you, Shalin? Where can they find you? How do people connect with you? Uh, well, I can you guess leave my email address. Oh, okay. everybody's pointing. Yeah, yeah leaving okay. my influencer life loud. Okay, okay, you know. <laughs> email address. You can find me on Twitter. It's uh, Shalin X N uh, on Twitter, and I talk about stuff there. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, John. Jen, Charlene, for sharing your experience, your stories with us. Now, if you pay attention just now, you'll pay attention uh, to what she said. She mentioned financial trauma, which we're going to talk about it in future episodes. So make sure you tune in, okay? Bye! Bye! Bye.